How you doing? This is BK from ManForWars.com and ManForWars Media, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents locally, offline, worldwide, teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and to help, to help the same people locally discuss and share great online info they find offline as better people, making better people, and places to live, getting better politicians' results, as respected, polite patriots connecting well with their neighbors, uh, organizing with their neighbors and uh, helping them think for themselves by hearing stuff they normally don't think about, even on the internets with all the online censorship and digital ghettos and people talking to like-minded strangers. Uh, this is a chance to kind of connect with your neighbors, especially now during this COVID-1984 novel, coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic, um, and see more details in the description below for how to do that. Um, and on this video, um, this video is called Dirac Trump Bama, pardon your old friend of 40 years, Roger Stone or no one else can trust you. Dirac Trump Bama, pardon your old friend of 40 years, Roger Stone, or no one else can trust you, right? And um, and I'll go through a couple of details with respect to this, and I'll explain why, right? And um, so first of all, I am uh, a Trump fan, or I was a Trump fan, uh, certainly not before he became president, thought he was sort of obnoxious, goofy billionaire, although I later learned he was deeper than that. I just had a, a media impression of him. Um, but, um, you know, I'm a fan because he's a man. He's a man, right? He talks like a man. 80% of the stuff he says, rallies or whatever, is pretty cool. The other 20% is eh, but hey, the 80% is really cool. He's funny. He's smart. Deal maker, successful, badass. He's like the um, the typical kind of high school quarterback that all the girls like or whatever. And um, he's I'm a fan because he's a man, right? And so women love him and men respect him and the left hates him because they want to destroy all men. And if men get all messed up, instead of making sure everyone's cool, they make sure everyone's a mess. And that takes us all down as part of their plan to destroy the West for globalist, super rich, evil people above countries who want to use a world government with the UN and others, China model they built up to replace the US and replace the West uh, for their totalitarian world government control. So that's why they want to destroy religion and family and culture and men and women and kids and everything we like. And that's why they're shrill, bitchy idiots making normal people shrill, bitchy idiots and polite patriots can be shrill, bitchy idiots as I've proven extensively at manforwars.com and hopefully um, you can where you live too. So um, so he's a man. I was a fan. Um, I like, um, you know, um, uh, most of what he says and, and, you know, half of what he does, right? I think he does some really great things, um, you know, in terms of promoting nationalism versus globalism, in terms of promoting pa patriotism, in terms of encouraging other countries to be nationalists and patriots. I think it's great getting out of the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, and staying out of the Paris Climate Accords and UN Global Compact for Migration. All that stuff is good. But I don't think he does enough on censorship in terms of internet censorship um, and so on. I don't think he does enough to connect with his base through uh, the media that his base likes. He still sort of courts the mainstream media and on and on and on. And I can go through a lot of his resume. Done a lot of great things. I've admired a lot of great things he's done, a lot of great things he said, but has also been slipping in some areas and so on, right? And this current COVID-19 pandemic tyranny the sort of, uh, you know, martial law style responses and uh, and the, the global looming depression is all happening under his watch. So I hope that uh, like the Simpsons didn't predict him to herd conservatives into the flu world order in the same way that Obama could herd liberals into being warmongers, destroying the anti-war movement and cheering for him every time he bombed someone. When it was Bush doing it, it was bad. When it was Obama doing it, it's good. So we can't just socially cheer or make excuses uh, and so on. You know, we've got to, you know, not be cheerleaders. We've got to be real leaders. And that includes analyzing Trump, hence the Dirac Trump Obama, um, you know, um, ad hominem. Uh, that I'm using to attack him to make sure that he doesn't just say the right things, but he does the right things. That also includes people like us who know what the right things to do are and to push him to do those right things, not just make excuses for whatever he does and so on. We've all done it. I've done it myself. I get it. Maybe you got to work with the military industrial complex. You got to make some compromises. You got to work with the mainstream media, still reach most people, make some compromises and on and on and on. But we're a little late in the game and people could do that for anybody, right? So the second point is, He's also got a cult of personality like Obama's, right? And so like Obama would be like, you know, we need to make sure Americans are the freest, strongest, and best people in the world. And Trump could say, you know, America's so great. The farmers are great. The people are great. Like they both could do that. And so we've got to be a check and balance against that, right? And um, so you get the point. <clears throat> so the next point is um, 
his old friend of 40 years, Roger Stone, right? He's a veteran political operative, right? Which means he's sort of managed campaigns, advised on campaigns, worked on campaigns, been a journalist and a pundit, and he's been somebody sort of behind the scenes of a lot of political operations, especially on the more conservative side. He's sort of a libertarian, libertine conservative. Um, but he has worked um, you know, on, on more conservative campaigns. He's got a giant uh, Richard Nixon, President Nixon tattoo on his back. Thinks Nixon was wrongly railroaded. He was trying to do some good things and the system kind of attacked and screwed him with Watergate. And uh, you can go into that. Um, but he also used to be Trump's, apparently, used to be Trump's wingman on dates, right? So Trump would go out on dates with pretty girls and, uh, and Roger Stone would be, you know, his buddy with his own, you know, chick. And, uh, and, you know, he would double date with Trump, right? And he would, he would help, you know, just like me with my girlfriends, you know, or potential girlfriends, I've got the sanctioning committee, right? Where, you know, college or wherever, typically dating a girl for a couple of weeks, think, you know, pretty, pretty nice girl. I'd bring her by my boys and I'd say, all right, hang out, you know, walk through the York University kind of area with my boys there, the pool hall or whatever. And she hangs out with all of us for a bit. And then, you know, she's got to go to class or something. And I'd say to the guys, all right, what do you think? Before I'm in too deep, let me know. Keep her or leave her, right? And and I'd get some good intel from my buddies as part of the sanctioning committee that I had. So Trump, uh, uh, Roger Stone was part of Trump's sanctioning committee where he was basically like, seems like a keeper or eh, better leave her, right? Hot, but not good for you and not a good person and, you know, or whatever, right? Um, and so, um, so, you know, so they used to be really, really um, close, right? They were close friends for 40 years. And um, uh, he, he, they, 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 um, they distanced each other um, during Trump's presidential campaign because a lot of leftists complained, because a lot of leftists complained about Roger Stone, seems to have this sort of Machiavellian, sort of the brains behind the prince type thing, and, and you know, um, caused some, some leftists to lose some elections and so on. And so they didn't like him, right? And he's got a bad reputation in certain circles. It seems like a nice guy to me. I've seen him. I've heard him. I've heard him on uh, Infowars.com and the Alex Jones Show and the War Room. He used to co-host with Owen Schroyer and seems like a decent guy, right? He may have some shady shadows. He may, you know, be up to some shady stuff here and there. But the bottom line is it seems like a good guy, right? And, um, and yet um, Trump and Stone distanced uh, each other during the campaign, so Trump could, you know, more effectively make deals with certain people he had to work with to get the kind of support that he needed to, to, to successfully run for president, although they did support each other from afar, so that's not a good sign, but they still said positive things about each other. Stone still campaigned heavily for Trump and said Trump's a great guy, great instincts, you know, he's the man to save America, the man to help America save the world, right? And Trump would occasionally say, Roger's an old friend, good guy, I know him done, right? But they, he didn't work on the Trump campaign directly because of these other forces around the campaign that, you know, didn't like him and found him easy to kind of slag and slander. So that's not a good sign when you're a man who's standing up for your buddy. But hey, you know, things uh, worked out reasonably well with Trump winning the presidency. Um, <clears throat> now, Stone got caught in the Russia Gate hoax, right? Where they say, um, you know, Russia's uh, controlling Trump and Putin's controlling Trump and Trump's his puppet, and uh, they they fake the whole thing with the P dossier, the dossier, right? And as they call it, you know, about Trump, you know, with some Russian hookers, he likes to get peed on. He's actually a germaphobe, what I've heard, but I don't know about all that stuff. Says he never used to shake hands till he ran for president because he's afraid of germs and stuff. But um, but whatever. And so they, you know, that that blew up and that was exposed as a total fraud, even though they spent a couple years saying he's working for Russians and then all the investigations go through the Mueller probe and all that and no he's not it's bullshit right and the FBI and, and other people lied to kind of um, you know uh, try and trap uh, a president who was a threat to this sort of globalist super rich evil people above countries and their deep state allies within countries in bureaucracies in different countries who are entrenched not like politicians who get voted in and out, but who kind of work for the Department of Agriculture, Education, or Defense, or whatever, for years and years and years, and, uh, and they're kind of stuck there, and they can be corrupted, and they can influence different agendas than what the people and politicians want. So um, so Trump was uh, supposedly a threat to that as a disruptor. He wanted to drain the swamp, as he said, right? Um, so <clears throat> Stone got caught. They said he gave uh, Hillary Clinton's emails to WikiLeaks, Right. He says, you know, they said he was involved in that. That was proven to be not true. He wasn't involved in that. Um, however, in going over um, every bit of, of Stone's uh, resume, right, they found a couple of things. What I can tell, they found that he forgot an old email he sent to somebody and um, he threatened 
uh, a friend of his in the same way that you might threaten a buddy of yours who's being a rat, um, Randy Credico, a comedian, and says, you know, don't you snitch on me and shit on me and try and flip me to save your own worthless ass. And so they got him for that, right? And he wasn't, probably wasn't really serious. He doesn't seem like the kind of hitman kind of guy. Um, but, you know, they can exaggerate these things that they want to get you and they find a bit to get you that then they can really get you. And um, it was a process crime in many ways where there's this false kind of, kind of investigation going on. A bunch of people semi-related to it are wrapped up in it. And then they can catch you in a lie. Like if they check for all my vlogs and they say, did you do a vlog about this? And I'm like, I don't know. I've done hundreds of vlogs. It's like, well, did you do a vlog about this? Tell me exactly. So I think I did one about this, about this, about this. I don't think I did one about that. And then they go, yes, you did. We found it. Now, go to jail. Right? So, well, fuck, man. I've done a whole bunch of shit. Like Roger Stone sent a whole bunch of emails. You know what I mean? Like, But that's what they did. They found like a cheap process crime. Then they had a corrupt judge, Amy Berman Jackson in Washington, a corrupt jury made up of a bunch of uh, Hillary Clinton supporters and, 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 and liberal donors and, uh, and, and, and so on in Washington, D.C. And they used that to give Stone a harsh sentence to the point where he might die in prison because he's already an old guy. He's like 70-something years old. And if they sentence him to a few years, he might drop dead, right? So <clears throat> that catches you up from my generic understanding on Roger Stone. And this is to Trump saying, look, this is an old friend of yours. You can clearly see this whole thing's bullshit. And if you won't pardon an old friend of yours for 40 years, who's been an ardent supporter of you, you know, for 40 plus years, you know, before your campaign, during your campaign, after you became president, he's always had your back. And if you won't support your buddy of 40 years, then how can anyone else trust you? If you won't support your brother uh, in many ways, how can anybody else trust you? And so that's important, and that's something that Trump should do. And even if a bunch of people, you know, on the left or a bunch of sellout, crooked, you know, shrill, bitchy, professional lying bitches in the media, uh, making more bitches who make more bitches who make more bitches out of the rest of us, unless we resist and expose them and stop it, um, you know, even if they freak out and get their manties and panties in a bunch, so what? They always do that anyway, right? It's just one more thing for them to freak out over. It might be something um, that they freak out over that makes people respect you and trust you more uh, as opposed to something they freak out over, you know, which is just other bullshit or bullshit that's more damaging to you, right? So I'm going to get to this Breitbart News article here. This is from Breitbart.com, great source for politics and pop culture news. Um, I recommend Breitbart. Um, as the late, great Andrew Breitbart, founder of the site, said, politics is downstream from culture, which means, <coughs> excuse me, they change the culture first. And then once they change the culture, they bring um, a political changes, right? Like they'll say, you know, trans this, trans that, right? And then, you know, you'll be like, uh, okay, sure, whatever. And then, so you all accept it. And then they go, now trans kids can go into little girls' change rooms, right? Any man that puts on a dress, doesn't matter if he's got his equipment, doesn't matter if he's got a big beard, you know, it doesn't matter if he's a pedophile, you know, you got to let him into your little girls' change rooms or it's, you, you hate women. It's like, I don't hate women. That's not a woman, right? Not even trying to be, but, excuse me, <coughs> but then they pass laws making that the case. So, <coughs> excuse me. It's a good idea to keep an eye on politics and culture, and Breitbart does a great job. <coughs> Sorry about that. I've got a little frog in my throat. Hopefully that's a good defrogger. Um, so this is um, Breitbart.com. Roger Stone on Trump pardon. Nothing promised to me I have not applied. There is the article. And it is fairly short, so I will read it. <clears throat> There's the photo by Andrew Caballero. And there is the article by Robert Krejcik from April 19th, 2020. All right, you can find this yourself if you'd like. But it says here, Roger Stone said President Donald Trump has not promised him a presidential pardon following his conviction in November. He joined Sirius XM's Breitbart News uh, Sunday with Breitbart News Sunday with host Joel Pollack for an interview after the lifting of a judge-imposed gag order upon him for 16 months. This guy makes, make, makes his living as a pundit, as a journalist, as an author, right? And the judge gave him a 16-month gag order. So even though he's got mounting legal bills, people try and donate to help him with that, he's not even allowed to make his own money for 16 months. That's how corrupt this, this judge is. So um, Breitbart's Joel Pollack asked, are you expecting the president to step in here and issue a pardon? 
Stone replied, I can tell you that nothing has been promised to me. I can tell you that I have not applied formally for any pardon. Obviously, I am praying fervently, but I think that's in God's hands. Paul equipped, well, technically, it's in Trump's hands, right? Stone responded, but the Divine One knows what everyone is going to do. The President's been very forthright in his criticism of my trial. Judge Amy Berman Jackson doesn't seem to recognize that even the President of the United States has First Amendment rights and that federal judges can be criticized. It's actually legal in this country. So <clears throat> when it comes to that, sometimes when judges are criticized, they say that could be threatening judges, messing with the law, and so on. But criticizing a judge is different than threatening a judge, right? But this is what he says. He says, I think it's in God's hands. And Pollock says, well, technically, it's in Trump's hands, right? And technically, it is. And if Trump is a God-fearing man, um, then, you know, um, they should work together on this. Um, <clears throat> it says here, Judge Amy Berman Jackson didn't like it when Tucker Carlson criticized it. That's the trial. Didn't like it when Alex Jones criticized it, continued Stone. She just fundamentally doesn't like the First Amendment, but I am hopeful. Obviously, I am praying, but I have no secret here. I am not the promised, I'm not promised anything whatsoever. Stone remarked, I had a jury of all Democrats, noting that four of the jurors in my case were attorneys. He recalled Mike Cernovich's reporting of the partisan and left-wing politics expressed by one of the jurors in his trial. So these people are all openly anti-Trump, all openly get anyone associated with Trump. Anybody likes Trump. And they railroaded, they railroaded his buddy of 40 years. And that's why I think uh, Trump should uh, do a ballsy, manly thing to do, the type of thing that women love and men respect, and that is pardon Roger Stone. And I hope this video and analysis kind of helps us uh, understand that. And this will give him more credibility for his uh, handling of this COVID-19 pandemic crisis. And it will also give him more credibility to reject the bullshit involved, the bullshit from Dr. Fauci, the bullshit from Dr. Burst, the bullshit from the deep state, the bullshit from uh, as the establishment, right? Because if he does more anti-establishment stuff and if he pardons, pardons Roger Stone and all of his supporters go, that was a manly, honorable, ballsy thing to do, Mr. President. Now we want you to do more of that sort of thing and not just listen to these flakes fucking with you. Right. And, and, and I think I think this will certainly help. And plus, it's a good thing to do. It's, it shows he's a man who could be trusted when it comes to his family and friends, which means he can, he's a man who could probably be trusted with everyone else, including the people of America and the people of the world. And there you have it. So um, anyway, <clears throat> um, BK for ManForWars.com. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions, answers to work together or financial support. Uh, see the description below for what we can do about this latest new flu and how we beat swine flu last time. And it'll give you something to do as we all share patriot best practices around the world to escape from this crap and, uh, and help each other do it too. And uh, there you have it. Hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.